So another question was, how do you actually say, I want to keep or remove some of these, um, these points in the center, but not the points around the edge? Essentially, what, I'm, what I'd be doing is specifying that I want to take a subset of the branches, right? So I'll say this as a new version. Tree subset. All right, and I'll go back, I'll delete this stuff here. So we're back to our simplified set of trees. All right, so we're going to use the paths as a way to keep or remove some of these branches. All right, so if we go to the sets tab and tree sub tab, let's look at what we have as options here. Uh, we want to only bring out certain parts of the data tree. Right? So one way we could do that is that we could say, let's keep a specific tree branch or retrieve it. Right? So we, that might be an option where we'd have to actually specify which path we want. Another option could be to split a tree, apply branch masks to a tree structure. Okay, let's we'll check that out. All right, so uh, let's first, let's say, um, try the split, all right? This takes in the tree to split and the splitting masks. These are the trues and falses that define which ones to keep. So let's connect our simplify into D, and then let's use a panel to specify the input for M. And I'm just going to do a true false uncheck multi-line data, and hit OK. If I plug that in, okay, that's interesting. I think that's a bug. The mask wants uh, Ah, this one actually takes in a specific collection of um, by querying the path. So what we need is we would need a mask. If you go to the help, it should tell you, nope, it's not here. Um, the masks are going to be in um, one of the other sets trees. Or there's a description of them. So what we would want is, let's say we want all of the items in this uh, data tree that have two and then anything else in them, right? So it would have to be two for A and then star or asterisk is a wild card, which means anything other than that. If you do that, that's actually going to say, look into this data structure, give me out of P all of the paths that match that sequence or that mask. So if I put a point container after P and turn this off, this shows me just the column 2 to 5. So that's a way to call out either by, um, um, by a specific, let's say, uh, relationship to the original data structure. You could say, also, I want star 1. That gives me also all of the points that are in uh, this row, in the one row. So that, that all the options that solve for that um, condition. Right? So you could start to develop some more advanced expressions to do that if you wanted to pull out certain portions of the grid. Another way um, would be to um, say, I want to only um, include some of the data branches, right? So what I could do here is pull this down. This is split tree. Okay. 
So what I can do here is say, I want to take a subset of this tree branch. In this case, it might actually be um, more useful for us to first do this once. Like, let's say we wanted to have an inner portion of this uh, grid. Like, let's say this much, right? We might first want to say, let's take all of these columns. And then let's say, okay, now I only want to take these rows. Right? And the way this works is that you can take in a data tree and any path and specify that that's the one you want. Right? So turn the preview off here. And I'm going to need my set tree, tree statistics. So here's my path, all of my paths. So let's say for, um, for simplicity's sake that we want every other point, right? So every other path. So what we could do is we could take these paths and we could call them by a pattern. So here's our paths. We'll use this guy here. True true, false. So that's my pattern. I'm going to keep two, then remove one. Hit OK. Connect this to P. These are my paths, and these are my data trees. So notice I get every row because I have true, false, true, false, sorry, true, true, false, true, true, false, True, true, false, true, true, false. If instead I did true, true, false, false, we're going to see we have true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false, because the data paths are wrapping in terms of their order through the grid of points. All right, so that's another way to start to pull out sub-portions of a data structure just by specifying which path you want to use or keep. Okay, so um, another question was uh, related to the previews of what you see. So by default, Grasshopper is going to be creating preview geometry in the viewport. That's not anything you can select. Um, it's not live, or I guess it is live relative to Grasshopper. It's not in Rhino. Um, so by default, that's going to be red, and when you select something, it's going to be green. Now, I've modified my document preview settings, which you can go to here to select, and you can specify that any color, gray, a little bit transparent for normal, and selected blue, maybe brighter if you want, but that's can't, probably can't see that on your end until I make it a little bit more like that. More transparent. Hit OK. Right, now I can say I have uh, I can more easily see my geometry when it's not selected. It's a little bit less harsh on the eyes. And now I have blue to really call out the entities that are selected in Grasshopper. All right. So that's going to be about it. Um, for the for the webinar proper.